Hello, Northwest Arkansas. Welcome back to another episode of Bird's Eye View Real Estate in Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Nick Limbird, with my co-host, Tara Limbird. Hello. How are you this morning, Miss Tara? Oh, so far so good. Well, good deal. Well, we're glad you joined our show. What are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about, in this hot market, what you need to know if you're a buyer so you can win the offer to the house of your dreams. Well, I keep hearing how hot the market is, even in this uh, early part of the year. It is. It can, there's a shortage of inventory, so it can definitely be difficult if you're the buyer on how to, how to get your offer accepted. And so we've got some tricks of the trade that our team uses to help our buyers uh, Win the, win the right property. And this should so. be a very good episode. That's right. Lot, lots of good content here. And like she said, it is a very competitive market. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and kick off the show. We always like to talk about what's positive, what's going on good out there. Well, I know one thing that's positive is uh, next week is our anniversary of our team. So we have had the Lindbergh team now for 11 years. 11 years, Can man. You that? Seems like yesterday. Double digits. Yeah. I don't think, think I had any gray hair back when we started. I, know. So. I thought you said those were all from me. Oh, uh, well, we I kinda, think kind of goes hand in yeah, hand. So For sure. We work together yeah. and uh, do life together. That's so. right. We do have a few special guests here in the studio, if you will, today. We, de we have our fur babies, Roxy and Millie, so they'll not be running around. Hopefully, they'll uh, be quiet. But we also have a special guest. She's decided to remain behind the camera. But her name is Lindsay Harville, and she is a realtor with Bradford and U Dodge, and she also happens to be my sister. So she uh, has been giving us the lowdown on what real estate's like just south of us here in northwest Arkansas in the River Valley area. So it's always good to uh, to, to trade secrets and uh, discuss market updates. Sure. Lindsay, it sounds like you guys' market's pretty, pretty active and hot as well. Is that correct? Yeah, it's really hot. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll have some content, and Lindsay can join us here in a little bit. So. That's right. Well, we may have to get her mic'd up to do that. But don't forget, you're tuned in to Bird's Eye View, Real Estate Northwest Arkansas. And you can find us on our website, limbirdteam.com, or our Facebook page. Or you can even call us, the old-fashioned telephone, 855-755-SOLD. So, all right, Nick, it's ready? Time to play a game? Oh, boy, you and your games. I know yeah. it. Yeah, so this one's going to be kind of cool. We haven't played this one before. I'm going to say a word, and you're going to tell me the first word or whatever, or phrase, whatever comes to your mind when I say this. Ready? All righty. Let's, Let's see how off. this goes. Country. Music. Ooh, okay. Lunch. Box. <laughs> Fire. Wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Snow. Oh, no. <laughs> we don't want any more of that, Yeah, right? we've had enough here. <laughs> we've had enough. Ago. Yeah. Hunting. All day. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. All right, now it's my turn, I guess. All righty, pool. Drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get this party started, All right? All right, sounds like a margarita or something. Yes. Cloud. Rain. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go the other way. Family. Heart. Heart, okay, that was sweet. Go. <laughs> Music. Country. Oh, oh you, got me. <laughs> you, you cheated. That's right. I can't repeat it. You planted answers. that seed. Yep. All right, last one, color. Blue. It's because you have a blue shirt. Oh, man. Yeah. I'll tell so, you. yeah, we're real creative around here. So uh, we do want to give uh, Metro Property Management. They're sponsoring our team member shout out of the week. And that is Daniel Rojas. Yes. Daniel just joined our team about six months ago. Mm -hmm. He was actually in the insurance business for a while before that. So he's kind of had a different perspective of real estate. And he's bilingual. He speaks Spanish and English. So that's awesome because we know... I know uh, I know enough to order at a Mexican restaurant, but that's probably not going to help anybody buy a house. Well, I've been me. been to dinner with you, and you're not that good at yeah, it. No, stuff. So. <laughs> so you definitely get some weird looks. But uh, <laughs> yeah, now Daniel's sure. been great, and it's a great service because we do have a large Hispanic market here in Northwest Arkansas, and so it's good to be able to have somebody that can. Uh, interact with them and, and work with them and speak that language. Because sometimes there can be a language barrier, which well, it makes will make, people, it, make it a little more difficult and we provide a little bit better service. And make people feel more comfortable. Absolutely. Too, for yeah. sure. All right. So our next thing, before we get started on our main topic, which just as a reminder is how to buy a house in this crazy market, how to win your offer. We're going to teach you all the tip, tips of the trade. So, but before we do that, uh, Harbor Closing Company is sponsoring our Limbird Vision and one of our visions, and we talked a little bit about this last week, but kind of expanding on that is our why. And one of our whys is creating legacy for our families for generations to come. I actually just had a conversation today with Cass on our team about 
how to start investing in real estate because that's where you can start building wealth for your family for these generations to come because as we say all the time you know the last dollar you made in real estate just the last house that you sold so how did how do you turn that into some other forms of income for your family in case something were to happen to you or anything like that. So uh, but that's that's part of why we do what we do for our team members is we love seeing them flourish in uh, not just in real estate sales, but in how to build and manage wealth. Absolutely. All yeah, right. I think you nailed it. Okay, well, good. That's, I don't All hear right. that very often. So Yeah, good job, good job. <laughs> so, All righty, well, let's get to our main topic. Okay, we have a lot to talk about. I think just briefly i jotted down like over 20 different ideas i know we won't get all to all of these but here's a few so if you have questions if you've been trying to find a house and everyone you can't find it or you're writing offers and you're not getting accepted uh like said lots of different ideas as you like to say lots of different ways to skin a cat and we've got a lot of those here so anyway you want to get started yeah we do and uh for those of you guys just joining in nick and tara Lindbergh, Lindbergh real estate group talking about uh how to win in a buyer's market, or excuse me, a seller's market yes. if you're a buyer. That's so, right. So we're going to give you some tips uh, if you are a buyer out there looking of how to make your offer and stand out and uh, win that negotiation, That's hopefully. Right. So, All right. so what's tip number one? Let's kick it off. I think uh, one of the main things mm -hmm. is you've got to be pre-approved pre and ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, like we mentioned on the show before, housing uh, inventory is very low right now and the market's very, very competitive. We're seeing lots of houses getting multiple offers. And one of the easiest ways to get the process started early on is getting pre-qualified, uh, assuming you're gonna get a loan you're not paying cash. And that means getting out there and talking to a lender, maybe a couple different lenders, having them look at your finances, you know, your debts uh, and kind of seeing what kind of house you can afford. Because uh, that's going to be the first step. Most people know that if they've talked to a banker, that they've kind of checked a few boxes yeah. and uh, that, the ball's rolling. For sure. And having that letter, because, you know, there's plenty of people we work with that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt they can get a loan. They, they know. It's not a big deal. It's not like they have to go find out. I think that's sometimes where the misconception is, well, I don't need to go get pre-approved. I'm good. The problem is, is in a multiple offer situation, if there's five offers and four of those people, they have a letter and they've, they have they can prove that and you don't, even though we know you're good to go, you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. So that's why that's super important. And you said you mentioned, or you may be paying cash, having a letter from the bank or something to show verified funds, because I can't even begin to tell you how many times in the last 17 years that I've had people that have, have cash that don't really have cash. <laughs> Yeah, you know? or they have to go pull it from some account that's right. got restrictions or there's a timetable right. before they can do that. Right, or some life insurance and yeah. it's going to take four years to get it or whatever. Yeah. So Well, and that it brings it. us to another another great way to win in a, this market right now as a buyer is we mentioned if you most people do get loans, but there are people that are able to pay cash. And a lot of times putting a cash offer out there is a very good way to do that. Um, a lot of times it's required when you're getting a mortgage to get an appraisal. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times when paying cash, most people don't get appraisals. And as we're finding, you know, house prices keep going up and those appraisals kind of keep following it. So right. that can be a lucrative opportunity for a, a seller who knows, hey, I may not be subject to an appraisal because typically in a real estate transaction, there's two big hurdles to overcome. One, the inspection up front and repairing, you know, uh, working through the repairs and, and that process. And then the other can be the appraisal if you're getting a loan. Right. Well, and the people that are pre-approved, that still doesn't mean that something can't happen midstream and now that person can't get a loan. So the fact that they could pay cash just makes it feel more secure. Uh, and I was going to say something else and now I forgot. And I'm sure it was like the most important thing Earth ever. shattering. Yes, good. for sure. We'll, yeah. we'll circle back. <laughs> okay, good. So another thing is when you're Oh, I know what I was going to say, really important, is some people I know will say, well, I have the cash, but I don't really want to use it to, for my house. Do it anyway, because if you can pay cash, then once you close, go to the bank, and then they can do a cash out refinance, so you get the majority of your money back, minus what you probably would have paid on a down payment. But if you have the funds to pay cash, do it so you can win, and then you can then you can get your cash back out later. Sure. So well, another another thing that we're seeing in this is if if you are a buyer and you're out there competing against some of these other buyers out there trying to find that dream home, you've got to be prepared 
to come in very strong with your offer. Strong offers, clean are, offers. are super important right now. Clean, well, I'll let you get into that here in a minute, but uh, there's not as much negotiation as there might be opportunities in a different kind of market. Right now we find that very little negotiations are being done. People, sellers aren't coming off the price as much. They're not throwing a lot of concessions out there because they don't have to because the demand is so strong right now. And in a lot of cases, there's people who are you know, their house may be priced something, they're actually offering over what that price is. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes, depending upon the demand and popularity of that particular house, there's sometimes people off, several people offering over. So it ends up becoming a little bit of a bidding war. So right. come in with the mindset that, hey, I'm going to have to bring a strong offer. I'm not going to be able to beat the seller down and negotiate a really super sweet deal right now. Mm -hmm. That's always tough as a buyer, but you have to kind of supply and demand, just basic economics here. For sure. And when speaking about that appraisal, let's just, let's play with numbers here. Let's say you have a house that's listed at 250,000. Well, let's say a buyer comes along and they need a loan and they say, I'll pay you 300,000 for the house. Well, as a seller, especially de depending on what kind of representation you have, you're like, holy cow, I'm taking that offer. But we all know if the house is listed at 250, that's probably actually what it's worth or very close to that. So it's not going to appraise and their, their loan is subject to that appraisal. So don't be blinded sometimes by these big numbers. However, one of the things you can do that we've been seeing work very well is to have, uh, to basically say, okay, I'm gonna, the house is listed at 250, I'll pay you 260 or I'll pay you up to $5,000 over the appraisal price if it doesn't appraise for 260. So let's say it only appraised for 252, well then they'll, they'll come out of pocket and pay that extra five grand to get it to 257. So that's another way that we've been winning for buyers is by having, you have to be willing to come out of pocket a little bit and know that you're, you know, basically you're overpaying a little bit for a house. However, if prices keep going up, you know, that house that now you've paid 257 for, might be worth three hundred thousand by the end of the year. You know. Yeah, Just, I think I think I saw that uh, homes have appreciated twelve to fifteen percent here. Just in the last ninety days. Yeah, isn't that incredible? Yeah, incredible. it is very crazy. So, well, one thing you mentioned earlier uh, was something about a clean offer, mm -hmm. and I want to go a little bit deeper with that. Um, kind of tell the audience out there that's listening what what exactly would what would a clean offer mean, or what would that look like? Yeah, basically, what I mean by clean is is don't clutter it up with lots of demands. You know, is if you can, don't ask for closing costs. Don't ask for home warranties. Don't ask for anything. It's just, here's the price. Maybe here's some of the things you're willing to do, like the appraisal that was talking about. But, uh, you know, don't, I cannot even tell you, I mean, and I'm ashamed to say we've done this with our, <laughs> we've even bought properties ourselves where I want the bar stools. I want the theater couch. I want the this. I want the that. Just keep it super clean. Don't, and unfortunately, it's just the market we're in. If you want to win the offer, if you're in a multiple offer situation, try not to ask for a lot of things. So that's what I mean by keep it clean sure. and no contingencies. Well, and that's a great point because a lot of times there, this seller may be looking at three or four potential offers and, uh, Price is usually a big, big factor, of course, right. obviously, but sometimes there's more to it than just price. There's other factors with this clean factor or maybe contingencies or something along those lines. Uh, let's talk about contingencies because a lot of times there's buyers out there who have a house to sell or maybe their house is already under contract, which is pretty normal in a quick time frame. Let's talk about the contingency side of things and how best to set yourself up for, for success. Sure. Well, a lot of times when, when someone is buying a home and they already own a home, they have their equity is built in that home they own. So they need to sell that house first in order to buy the new home. So a couple of different things. When you're talking to your lender, find out what different options you might have. You might be able to take some of the equity out of the home you're in now, and like as a bridge loan, and use that money for your down payment and your closing costs. So you don't, if you can qualify for both payments, that way you don't have to make your ha the, the purchase of this home contingent on the sale of the other. That will, it's, I, it's almost impossible right now to win an offer with a contingency. So that could keep you from having to do that, uh, which is, is super helpful. Um, so that's kind of what, you know, in regards to contingencies and all that, if you can stay away from that or, and I think that obviously the big issue is, is people don't want two house payments. And it's hard to say with any kind of certainty, but right now it's hard. It, you'd be hard pressed to find any house that's been on the market for more than 30 to 60 days. So if you can swing it for a few months and you can get approved, 
just just go with it, get your house listed, and then sell that after the fact. Well, sure, and, and most likely the way the market is, you're going to sell your house rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to shouldn't drag on and string out string yourself along too too far because as hot as the market is, right? On the flip side, but I want to talk about something else. Another great strategy that a lot of people don't think about, but. A lot of times what we're having problems with is these sellers want to put their house on the market, but then they can't find what mm -hmm. they're looking for. Or maybe they're trying to get in a, an offer in and get in a bidding war in a situation. And so a lot of times the ways that buyers can be super effective is lease that house back to that seller. Mm -hmm. um, so what it allows is the seller to close the house. They get all their proceeds and, and the equity that they may have in that house and they can go buy something else. But it also gives them time to go find something and identify it. Um, but that doesn't always work for some people because you can't be homeless, but there's a lot of people who maybe are in a, a lease where they're leasing an apartment or a condo or, you know, some house and their lease may, may, may not be up for three or four months. And right. so they can go ahead and lease that back. And that gives both parties a little bit of flexibility mm -hmm. um, to go out and accomplish that where they don't feel rushed and they can not get in quite as big a rush to find something or feel like they're, you know, yeah. Their, their hands against the stove. Right. Mm -hmm. So whether you're offering to lease it back or just to extend the closing, but the main thing is to remember this word, flexible. Be flexible. The problem is that sometimes we're not, that, that message is not being relayed to the listing agent and to the seller. And you may find out, well, they picked this other offer because they were going to give them 90 days. So like, I would have done that. It's like, so make sure that you or your agent are communicating to that seller and the listing agent saying, hey, we put the closing date of this, but this, you know, this is what we could do. I love to type out a letter or an email and I say, please feel free to forward this to the seller. That way they know that we're flexible on a lot of these different things. Sure. Now it's mind blowing because uh, we get offers all the time where you just get a look in your email and there's an offer. You don't even get a phone call from that agent. Yeah. presenting it or even an email following up, maybe going into a little bit deeper. And it's it's mind blowing to me because sometimes having a little conversation can make a lot more happen on a deal or make your deal look that much better. So right. uh, more communication is always a good thing, even in real estate for sure. Yeah, well, that's, I think when you think of selling, it's not, you're not just selling a house, you're selling your offer. How do I sell my offer and make that seller want to choose my offer? Sure, great point. Well, another thing that I, uh, I've always been impressed with and even long before the current market that we're in is, you know, there's an option out there to do what they call, you know, everybody's familiar with earnest money. Um, it's been around for a long time. Typically, earnest money has several uh, loopholes, if you will, that, that a buyer can get out. So it doesn't have as much enforceability or as, as much teeth, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, as, as maybe something like a non-refundable deposit. Right. And that's been something that is quite, quite uh, common in new construction when somebody's going to make changes to a house or build a house from the ground up. That's been in play there a lot. But a lot of times now in this market, if somebody's willing to put a non-refundable deposit down to, and offer that to that seller, that really shows that seller, hey, these people are serious. They're going to put their neck out on the line a little bit for, for my house. And if something goes wrong, they're potentially willing to risk this. So you know they're a real serious player. For sure. No, just having some skin in the game. Again, you got five offers stacked up. I mean, heck, we had a house the other day in Fayetteville that we listed, and we had over 20-something offers. So just keep that in mind. Okay, if you're willing to maybe get through the inspection phase and make sure there's nothing wrong with the home and then offer a non-refundable deposit, that money is still going, going to go towards the money you would have brought to closing. It's not extra money. It's just like you're prepaying that. And for a seller, that they're now making arrangements to change their whole life and move and all that, and maybe they have to go sign a lease or a contract somewhere else, they know you're not going to walk away from that thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars, whatever that number might be, which yeah, is important. No. Well, like you said, it's somebody having skin in the game, and and you know, just put the shoe on the other foot. If if somebody offers you say five thousand dollars or two thousand or ten, whatever that number may be, you go, hey, these people are really serious, and. Uh, Things do happen sometimes, but at least at that point, you've kind of covered your basis a little bit where, you know, if, if the deal did go awry, you've got that to fall back on. For sure. Um, but most people aren't going to put their neck out there unless they're really serious. And and mentally, that gets, gets you thinking, man, these people are the real deal. Definitely. Yeah. Well, one other great one that you don't hear a whole lot, but let's go back to my example. A house is $250,000. let us just say that seller doesn't owe anything on their home. Well, you think, okay, they're going to get a check for $250,000 at closing. 
No, they have closing costs too. They have realtor fees. They have real estate taxes. They have closing fees, title fees, title insurance, termite, all sorts of stuff. I've been seeing offers where the buyer is offering to pay all or part of the seller's closing costs. Because that's another way it's, it's, maybe it's not above the list price because now you've got to worry about appraisals. But if you're helping to pay part of their closing costs, that means they're going to net more money. Because for a seller, sometimes it's bottom line, which one am I going to walk away with more money? And that's another, another kind of hidden way to help make your offer stand out. Sure. Now it's a great point. Um, inspection. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we talked about appraisal earlier. One of the big hurdles in any real estate transaction is the inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, most people go out, hire, pay to hire a home inspector to have them go over through the house with a thorough comb, if right. you will, and look for any issues. And then at that point, the uh, buyers and the sellers, you know, get together and negotiate what they're willing to do on those repairs. Well, and that can be a big, big make or break uh, situation with the house transaction moving forward. Or well, not. most most offers we talked about a clean offer and no contingencies. Most offers are contingent on the home inspection, which typically has to happen within the first ten business days. But I've this is always a really scary one a little bit for me. But I have seen so many offers lately where the home is five years old or less that they still feel confident it's a newer construction home and they're waiving the inspection. They're waiving the right to even do an inspection. And so that's, you know, it's, it's, everything is risk reward. If you really love the house and you feel good about it, then that's another way to make your offer stand out. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, that's the tip we, of the we iceberg. Could, we could go much, much deeper, but we've got a certain time uh, restriction that we're looking at. But for those of you guys just joining in, we've got Nick and Tara Limbird, Limbird Real Estate Group. And we just talked about, uh, what to do in a buyer's market uh, right now. We've got our special guest, Lindsey Harville of Bradford U Dodge out of the Fort Smith Van Buren area. If you guys need any real estate help, I'm sure Lindsey's happy to reach out. If they want to get in touch with you, how do they do that, Lindsey? Call me at 719-9400. All right. 479-719-9400. All righty. Well, thanks for joining in, Lindsey. And we do have an audience question from Ashley from Bentonville. All right. She wants to know is if you're going to buy an investment property, would you suggest a lake home, a cabin, or more of a traditional home? Huh. Interesting question. Yeah, that is. I think a lot of it just depends on the individual. But uh, right. typically houses that uh, have some special feature are usually you know, very desirable for the right person, be it the lake or, you know, some people right. like more privacy with the cabin out in the woods. Yeah, I think that's a good good point. Is this, is this going to be an, a strictly an investment property or is this maybe more of a second home where you want to be able to have that retreat out in the woods, you want to be able to have that lake home, but you also want to turn it into something that could help potentially pay for itself. So lake home or a cabin might be even a good Airbnb or a VRBO type situation. No, absolutely. So. The Airbnb is a really, really popular trend right now. Uh, I know lots of people who are buying more than one house mm -hmm. and, and doing this and, and seem to be doing fairly well with it. So yeah. uh, if you can have a real nice standalone feature, no matter what it is, and uh, make it desirable to people, I think you'll fare fairly well. Funny story, Elizabeth on our team actually just sold a guy a house out towards Eureka because he had two homes and he put them both up for Airbnb and VRBO and he just basically decided when one's booked, I'll stay in the other and just kept flip-flopping, which was working perfect. But now they're both so busy, he's like, I literally have nowhere to live. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he's having to buy this ex this third home. He's like, no more VRBO or Airbnb on this one. I have to have somewhere to live. So yeah. it's a good situation if you're being an investor. But anyway, we're about to wrap up on time. Uh, sorry, guys, but again, Bird's Eye View, Real Estate Northwest Arkansas, Nick and Tara Limbird. Check us out, limbirdteam.com. Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, I mean, you know, the works, wherever you need to reach us. And uh, next week we'll be here, and I don't think we've decided on a topic yet. So if you have any suggestions, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.